Both men weighed in this afternoon at exactly 135 pounds. Since winning the world lightweight title one year ago, Ike Williams has won nine straight fights. Ike's last fight was his title defense against Enrique Bolanos. Both of these men are known as great fighters. They hmm. both have a tremendous following. Beautiful polo punch. Thrown by Bojack. Bojack won a 10 round decision from the hard hitting Tony Gennaro in Washington, D.C. Oh my god. Bojack likes to fight in close. Mike Williams likes to box at long range. Champion Ike Williams is 25, two years younger than Bojack. Stinging punches by Ike Williams. by challenger Bo Jack. Bo wants to get that title back. Mike Williams began his professional career in 1940, eight years ago. In 103 professional fights, the champion has won 90, a great record. And they're both looking to score a clean knockout. the champion Ike Williams has won this year. The most notable was a hard-fought 10-round decision over Kid Gavilan in New York City. Bojack staying all over champion Williams. separates the two fighters. Bo loves the infighting. Bo Jack, like champion Williams, Began his professional career in 1940, eight years ago. Bo's manager, Chick Wergelis, says his fighter is trained very hard, and he's very confident that Bo will regain the world lightweight title tonight. Both men throwing bombs in there. Well, should not exchange in this point. You should not exchange with Ike Williams. Ike Williams punches too hard. You should stay on top of Ike Williams the entire fight. Do not exchange punches with Ike Williams.
But here's the issue. Bo Jack is throwing punches too wide and Ike Williams is throwing straight down the pipe. Oh, beautiful uppercut by Ike Williams. And Bo Jack cleverly ties him up. Too many minutes left in the round. Oh, caught him with a right hand coming in. Did Ike Williams. But this would be the last round. Ike Williams goes straight out to Bojack because he hurt him and staggered him in the fifth round. Oh, he shuffles in. Now what he does is he triples up with the left hook. He has him hurt and he's not going to stop punching. He's throwing reins on Ike, on uh, Bojack. Oh my God. The referee is just has the best seat in the house. Does not want that fight stopped. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at this combination of Ike Williams. The towel should have been thrown in because there's no way in the world Bojack would get out of this. Cannot defend himself. He's hurt. Oh my god. Constant punches to the chin. That's a fight. That's a fight. Oh my god. Look at that uppercut. Oh, he thinks that Bojack is helpless. Now he threw a, a left uppercut and a right hand to the chin. Because he wanted to lift up the chin of Bojack. So he did it with a right a left uppercut and caught him with a straight right hand. Oh my god. One of the greatest lightweight champions in boxing this will make this about. Both men. Particularly Ike Williams. Absolutely. It's a brutal game, man. It is hard. It is rough. But when you talk about fight, Ike Williams, he will destroy you. He, he will destroy you. The former two-time champion was attempting to recapture a third lightweight title with his crude, relentless attack. One side of fighting, the comeback just throwing everything. He started in the first round, and he fought for 15 rounds that way. The comeback just, he and the both, both never did the final points of boxing. You know, it started like, like Sugar Ray Ross and all that Joe Wilson. I was so pleased that it all time. And they were just wondering how could I get through with this all the time, you know. First minute to the third one, I could fight every minute of the round because I put my body in shape to do it. I trained very hard. I was a very good condition before for that. I like the towel. I love the towel. I guess next to my next to my kids, I love the towel more than anything else. Total punch was his favorite punch. I mean, he wanted to get there with left jabs and the total bowl punch. I mean, and other punches with the left hooks and the right cross. Bolo punch was his uh, his main punch, you know. And actually, Bolo both through the bolo punch, but he uh, he looked too much. He made too much of a show. Out of it. He thought he, he wanted people to see it. I mean, Bolo was very spectacular. He was just real. He come in and move it like this. Throw the left jab, another left jab, combine the right hand, another left jab, right hand, nothing. And I done the same. That's what I mean. Hey, I had I a perfect set of teeth and. Uh, I started at one, I still have all my teeth outside of the one that they knocked out, you know what I mean? But uh, I, I did what anyone would do. I tried to finish the coach, I tried to knock him out. Like that, it was fun. So, you know, you can't get by. That took me too much time to do this and do this when these straight punches was coming all the time. When you get hit with a straight punch and everything is on it, you are a hurt man or knocked out. I thought the referee should start the fight. I turned around and I said, I said, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? You know, like, what, what you want to do to kill the man? I'm a fighter. I'm not going to say no to any fighter. If you want to fight me, you fight me. 
I'm not going to back up. I'm not going to run. You have to kill me right where you got me. I'm in there to fight. And I don't judge no fight on any fighter. I, I pick a man, I stick with him. And I read him just a great champion. And another old piece of champion telling you he was a great. Salute. Fight is a brutal game. They, it is hard. It is rough. But when you talk about fight, I agree him. He to destroy you. He, he will destroy you. One thing he had, many boxers wish they could get with a punch. And I'm the kind of man can tell you he got it. The form. May 5th, 1947. Monday night, Archie Moore loses to Ezra Charles 10 rounds at the Music Hall Arena in Cincinnati, Ohio. Charles would drop Moore in the seventh for a nine count. A crowd of 4,502 spectators would pay $23,281.50. Charles would offer $75,000 to Gus Nestevet, who was the champion for a shot. Now, as the Charles was 25 years old, he stood six foot and he weighed 174 pounds. He had a 73-inch reach and he had a record of 45 wins, four losses, one draw, and 23 knockouts. Archie Moore was 30 years old. He stood five foot eleven. He had a 75-inch reach. He weighed 175 and a half pounds. Had a record of 84 wins, 12 losses, seven draws and 65 knockouts. I had to take a water break, excuse me. Between July 29th, 1946 and April 14th, 1947, Charles wins six against Lloyd Marshall. Oakland Billy Smith, Jimmy Bivens. And Archie Moore wins four fights. Buddy Walker, Oakland Billy Smith, Jack Chase and Rusty Payne. Now Archie Moore would defeat Curtis the Hackman Shepherd, June 16, 1947 at Griffith Stadium in Washington. July 14, 1947. He'd be in the ring with Burt Littell. And Littell would lose to Archie Moore. He defeats Jimmy Bivens and Bobby Zanander. George Fitz we lose once again. There's our Charles. Now Charles was 26 years old and Moore was 31 years old. And Charles had a record of 53 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw, and 28 knockouts. Moore had a record of 89 wins, 13 losses, 7 draws, and 67 knockouts. The referee Jackie Davis has stopped the contest. Eighth round. Moore just couldn't continue. Although he tried his very best. See, Moore was a competitive fighter. Ask Yvonne Burrell and Rocky Marciano. But Moore was actually a light heavyweight and he just couldn't handle some of the body punches that was thrown at him that night. It was 8,334 spectators grossing $38,920 for that fight. And as the charge would move a little closer, getting his dream fight in the heavyweight division, he was looking to fight Joe Lewis. And that he would get in 1950, New York Yankee Stadium. But before that, he would face Joe Walcott in 1949. For the NBA version of the heavyweight championship strap, we will get to that fight. July 16th on a Monday night, 1947, Rocky Marciano, Rocky Graziano <laughs> knocks out Tony Zale for the NBA middleweight championship belt, Chicago Stadium. The referee was Johnny Ballard. He counts out Tony Zale two minutes and 10 seconds in the sixth round. In front of 18,547 spectators at Chicago Stadium. 
I'm calling him Marciano. Rocky Graziano. He was 28 years old. He stood 5 foot 7 inches. He weighed 155 pounds. He had a 68 and a half inch reach. Had a record of 45 wins, 7 losses, 5 draws, and 34 knockouts. As for Tony Zale, he stood 5 foot 7 and a half inches. Weighed 159 and a half pounds. He had a 69 inch reach and had a record of 63 wins. 16 losses, 2 draws, and 41 knockouts. And this was set up the trilogy that would take place 1948. One of the greatest three round fights in the middleweight division. Alongside with Thomas Hearns and marvelous Marvin Hagler. Matter of fact, I would even put in Nigel Bent and Iron Barkley. The first round. But there's been some great middleweight fights. Stanley Ketcher and Billy Papke. Harry Greb. And Zulu Kid. My God. Benny Kid Perret and Emil Griffith. Amazing. December 19th, 1947. Ray Robinson knocks out Chuck Taylor. Six rounds in Detroit to remain world welterweight champion. June 26, 1947. Marcel Sedan knocks out Giovanni Manca. Second round. And what was amazing, the Marcel Sedan hit Giovanni Manca so hard that it would break his ankle from the way to the fall. Manca couldn't continue. And he would remain the European middleweight champion of the world. February 20th, 1948. World ranked light heavyweight champion, Izzy Charles. Knocks out Stillman's Jim, the warrior, Sammy Baruti. We'll get to that fight in the next video. I'm Scrapbook Boxing. Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. 100 years of world championship fights. Hope you're enjoying it. See you in the next video. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Salute.